folks, this is Mr. McFly here, hope you're well. Now, a number of people have uh, asked me of late whether I can do some reviews of the kit that I use when I'm on the bike, um, and uh, as it's a bit cold at the moment, I thought uh, it would be an ideal opportunity to take a look at some of the kit that I use in the winter. Now, I found out when I started biking, uh, the expensive way, that uh, not one set of kit does you all season. Depends whether it's the depth of winter or the height of summer, of course, as to what you wear. And also, even in the spring and in the autumn, you need different kit as well. And you'll find out at what temperature ranges you can use certain kit. And as I say, it's sort of a trial and error job. Uh, and I'm hoping that by doing these reviews in the next few weeks and over the next couple of months, uh, I can help you sort of shortcut some of those expensive mistakes. Um, and, and tell you the stuff that's worked for me at least and when I use them. So for this first review, and as it's the middle of winter, what I want to focus on is what I think is one of the most important uh, layers, if you like, and that's the base layer. Now, in the la this season, I've been using uh, Knox base layer kit, uh, and I've found it to be very good. So stick around and stay tuned, and I'll give you my uh, review of the Knox base layer system. So, what do I mean by a base layer then? Well, a base layer is the first layer that you wear next to your skin in a layering system. Now, there's no um, magic about a layering system. Everybody that goes in extreme temperatures tends to recommend these these days, so mountaineers, skiers, they also the same thing. And much of the challenge is the same as we bikers face. So, it's the first layer that goes next to your skin. So, the first thing that the base layer has to be, for me, is very comfortable. So, that's number one. The next thing, it has to have sweat wicking um, qualities, i.e. if you get all sweaty it needs to make sure that, that sweat is taken away from you uh, and away from the body so you don't remain sweaty and then later on get cold. Uh, one of the best sweat wicking um, materials known to man, natural materials, is merino wool. So that's the third requirement for me. I need to have something that's got merino wool in it. Um, and then uh, last but not least, um, not only do I need it to keep me warm in the cold, I also need it to keep me cool in the warm, a seemingly impossible trick. But uh, again, with these technical fabrics these days, it is possible to keep your temperature regulated in that way. So they're the things um, I look for. Uh, I have found that actually to get the right base layer, it's not worth skimping on cost. You want to get the best that uh, that you can afford. Unfortunately, merino wool stuff tends to be quite expensive, but take it from me, that is the way to go. If you buy other stuff, you'll end up not using it and you'll end up buying merino wool stuff anyway. So all that said, what then uh, do I use as my base layer? So as I mentioned before, this season I've been using some kit from Knox, which is this stuff here. And this they market as the uh, dry inside all season base layer. And it's, these are made from something they call Merino Perform. So it's basically a Merino wool product, but it's mixed with some technical fibres as well that aid that uh, sweat wicking that I talked about. Now what I like about these is a number of things. Um, first of all, they're quite thin. Uh, which makes them very comfortable, so that's good. Um, there's no sort of scratchy seams on them anywhere that I've suffered with in the past with some other products, so everything's nice and smoothly done, so you don't get any irritation there, that's great. What I particularly like about the leggings here is that they've got these elasticated bits on the end, so you really have to stiff stuff your foot through to get it on, um, and then it seals the end of your trouser leg. Now, I'm, I can be a bit lazy on the GS, so I sometimes rest my legs on the <laughs> cylinder heads. On my old kit, I used to get uh, wind up the trouser leg, this stops all that, so that's fantastic. Um, what else to say? So yeah, merino wool, um, fantastic materials to say. Now I've been wearing these um, for a couple of months now in all the recent cold weather, and I have to say, another little function of these, these, uh, these haven't been washed for a few weeks, but I, and I have worn a lot, absolutely no odor. And that's one of the great things about merino wool kit. If you're out riding, um, you can be you know, on a tour or whatever, you only have to wash these every few days and you'll be absolutely fine. As I say, these have had a fair bit of use and uh, no, in all the usual areas, absolutely fine, no problem at all. So that's great. So, um, so the kit itself, comfortable, nice and thin. You can layer it up, um, so that's good. You don't look like Michelin Man or anything when you're wearing it. Uh, it's not too tight fitting. It does have a bit of an air gap, so that keeps you nice and warm as well. All very well. Does it work when you're out on the bike? So here I am riding at night and it's uh, four degrees outside. Pretty chilly, I have to say. Uh, and I've been riding for about an hour and I've got the uh, Knox base layer on. I have to say I'm absolutely toasty. My rule of thumb is if it's under 10 degrees, I put my thermal underwear on. Uh, so this day certainly counts as one of those. Um, my body and legs feel absolutely toasty. Everything that's um, a little bit cold, the backs of my hands, because uh, I haven't got heated gloves on today. I've just got uh, my heated grips on. But uh, as far as the rest of me is concerned, as I say, I've been riding about an hour. I could easily ride another hour or two. Uh, absolutely no problem at all. Very cosy. And look, it's three and a half degrees now it's dropped down to. So uh, very happy with these, very comfortable. The merino wool and the sort of technical fibre mix wicks away the sweat from your body. So uh, if you do go indoors and mill about and uh, get hot, uh, the sweat doesn't stay next to your body so that you're cold when you then jump on the bike, which is great. Uh, and then when you do come out and ride in these cold temperatures, you're absolutely toasty. So I'm really pleased with them and uh, fully, fully recommend these. They're uh, 
a great bit of kit. I'm going to take him skiing with me as well this year uh, and give him a try on the slopes. So there's no reason why you need to just uh, use these uh, newfangled technical fabrics just for the bike, of course. Or indeed, just at night time and on your daily commute. So here we are on another day, beautiful day, a glorious sunshine. I've been riding for a couple of hours around the back lanes. It's actually just two degrees, believe it or not. It's close to freezing. I've got the heated grips on again, so my hands are relatively warm. Uh, and my body, absolutely toasty. All I've got on is the uh, Knox bag base layer, a very thin mid layer, and then my jacket and trousers. And uh, yeah, I'm completely warm. So it's uh, really great how these newfangled materials work. If you're still riding with old kit, then I uh, thoroughly recommend you invest in some of this new stuff because uh, the technology really has moved on. So there we have it. That's uh, my review of the Knox Dry Inside Base Layers. Fabulous bits of kit. I've used them down to freezing temperatures and, uh, and they've worked really well this season. So uh, I shall be wearing them uh, quite a bit, I think, for the remainder of the year uh, and hopefully next year too. Uh, in terms of cost from Sports Bike Shop, uh, you can get them for, to refer to my notes. Uh, I only mentioned Sports Bike Shop because that's my favourite dealer. Go where you like. Uh, I'm not tied to them anyway. £55 from sports, shop, sports Bike Shop for the top, and the bottom is £50. Now, yes, that does sound expensive, but as I said before, uh, you get what you pay for with this stuff, and all Merino wall based products are expensive. Contrast that with um, some other kit. Uh, actually, I won't tell you the manufacturers. You, you can pay sort of £150 a set for this sort of stuff. So, actually, value for money wise, I think that's pretty good. Um, one thing that you don't want when you're on a bike is to get cold because once you get cold to your core it just messes with your concentration um, and it's just an, an unpleasant thing to do so it's not worth skimping on your uh, winter kit believe me okay so i hope that's been uh, of some interest to you the first of these sort of kit reviews look forward for, to doing a few more of those with you in the future and until then this has been the missing and flyer cheerio